Now, after some brilliant news, Australia has won the battle with UNESCO to prevent the Great Barrier Reef from being declared in danger by the UN. Maybe they've been watching outsiders and they learned that on the telly here. Hmm. Now, that we knew this already, but we've been saying it for years. Uh, Labor, of course, are trying to take the credit for this. Joining us now, the great marine physicist and adjunct fellow at the Institute of Public Affairs, that's the IPA. Check him out on ipa.org.au, Dr Peter Ridd. Peter, great to see you as always. So I think we're all heaving a sigh of relief that uh, Plibersec and Albanese have saved the Great Barrier Reef. You've worked there all your working life. I best, bet it came as a huge relief to you to find out that uh, UNESCO have said it's not in danger. What a surprise. Exactly, though they never mentioned in their reports that the Great Barrier Reef has got record high coral at the moment. They like to sort of skip over that. But it was actually <laughs> just blackmail what it was there, that they put a gun to Australia's head and said, we're going to declare it endangered unless you sign up to some crazy net zero targets and stop the, the Hell's Gate Dam west of here. And uh, we sort of signed up to that. So the blackmail will keep on going. They'll come back again next year and they'll demand more of us uh, but, of course, if we just uh, call their bluff and say, I'll oh, just go ahead, make my day, uh, let it become endangered. We know it's not. We know it at Redwood High Coral. Rita. Well, before Labor were elected, we had that uh, a huge growth in coral, uh, highest growth measured in 36 years where they've been measuring it. And yet I've got Chris Bowen this week <laughs> taking to social media... <laughs> Taking all credit, saying since we were elected, we've saved the Great Barrier Reef and now it's no longer in danger. I mean, how does he get away with this? And, and what is it costing us? Is it just a commitment to net zero? Are we paying money to UNESCO on top of that? Well, we're certainly paying in terms of, for example, the uh, government signed up to ban the, to stop the Hell's Gate Dam west of here. Crazy argument. They said, well... We need to stop the dam because somehow building the dam will damage the Great Barrier Reef, which is 100 kilometres out to sea. <laughs> okay. um, so, but what the problem here is that the all the scientific organisations are just skipping over this wonderful news. So there's been a, a, a new report from the Australian Academy of Sciences, another one from the so-called Independent Expert Panel on the Great Barrier Reef, all saying the reef is a disaster, and yet we've got record high coral. And in the final analysis, even UNESCO agrees that it's not endangered. There is no problem here. Well, Peter, I'm really curious about this because the spectre of blackmail and saying that, you know, we will hold a gun to your head and declare this if you do not follow the UN climate agenda for net zero and degrowth and all of the other things that they've got. This raises a really sinister possibility because in all of our chats up until now, I had always assumed that there was simply academic groupthink that was behind so much of what we're talking about here. But do you think that the prospect of UN money or other monies as well has corrupted Corrupted the scientific process around the reef and indeed other environmental reports? I don't think it's UN money. I think it's Australian government money. I mean, that's, mm. those are the mm. people who are... The Australian government is paying all these scientific institutions who are doing this. I mean, they're paying for the Australian Academy of Science, uh, who in their latest report, just, uh, what, three or four days ago, said that one of the things we should be doing is, is do solar radiation management. They're actually seriously talking about making a cloud over the Great Barrier Reef. Oh Remember, oh. to, th this is to, re to reflect sunlight. The Great Barrier Reef <laughs> is as big as Victoria, it's as big as Germany, and they're going to keep that cloud over the Great Barrier Reef for all of the summer and then do that for the next few hundred years. Well, These Pete, guys who got group think they've gone totally and utterly insane. I mean, aside from that being just a hideous <laughs> way to go snorkeling and see all the wonders with a great big cloud over your head, why then would the Australian government be trying to talk down this great attraction of ours? Well, this is precisely the problem. You know, we've got the, the Australian government sort of trying to wear two hats. They don't want it to be endangered, but then they pass legislation to say, well, it is endangered. So government's got all these uh, legislation against farmers saying, well, it's endangered, therefore we've got to stop the farmers doing all the things. But then when they see the UNESCO come along with a gun to the head saying, oh, we're going to declare it endangered, then Plibersec says, well, it's not really that endangered, it's just a little <laughs> bit endangered. So the whole thing is intellectually bankrupt. The science is bankrupt. Um, there's too much money, Australian government money, that's essentially being used to damage the reputation of the reef.
And Peter, you've mentioned the various studies uh, coming out, UNESCO and so on. Um, what, uh, what are the official studies? Are any new ones coming out soon, AIMS or any of those? Well, yes, actually. The AIMS, the Australian Institute of Marine Science, does a survey of 100 of the 3,000 reefs, uh, and each year they publish a report about this time. The data is actually all up on the website, and I've added, added up the numbers, uh, although AIMS has not released it yet. But I can tell you that the Great Barrier Reef has almost as much coral as it did last year when we had record-breaking levels. But actually, considering the, the uncertainty margin, it's essentially the same as last year's record-breaking level. So we've had three years in a row of absolutely wonderful conditions on the, on the reef. It will go back down because we'll have a big cyclone and we'll lose a whole lot of coral from the waves smashing it. But yet again, the reef is just magnificent. And yet these scientists, these bankrupt morally, these intellectually bankrupt scientists keep on running it down, even though the data says completely the opposite.